So, Harry, what does this deal do for Coca-Cola European partners? Well, um, Paul, Coke uh, Europe are uh, already one of the biggest bottlers in the world of the iconic drink. Um, but, of course, they're primarily uh, based in Europe. So this balances out their footprint a bit more. There's other, there's other bottlers uh, across the world that are kind of already transcontinental as well. There's uh, another bottler that's quite large as well called Coke Hellenic, um, and they kind of work uh, across Africa a bit as well as in Europe. But um, this will make uh, Coke European partners... Um, you know, really global and, and, and help diversify their footprint. So they're in Germany, Spain, Iberia, France. But, you know, with this, they'll be adding Australia, New Zealand, Fiji and, and um, you know, totally different kind of diversity and demographics to the, to the mix. Harry, when I saw the headlines from Bloomberg, and I believe this was a scoop a few hours ago, I immediately had to Google. Coca-Cola is so confusing. You've got two bottlers. You've got the Coca-Cola company. In a nutshell, what's the history? How does this work? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. It takes a bit of figuring out. Um, I mean, basically, you know, they're, they're the bottling. So, um, you know, what that means is that the Coca-Cola company, which is based in Atlanta, and, you know, they were the developer of the original kind of secret source many years ago, um, they still hold significant shares in these bottlers. But over, the, over the, uh, the last few years, since, you know, the late 90s, they've been trying to separate and make the company more of an asset light business, um, much like you'd see with any smart business model where it's, uh, you know, like Apple and then separating the manufacturing from the actual formulation and marketing aspects of the business. Um, and the bottlers aren't bad businesses. They're just very asset heavy and they're kind of, you know, yield, yield stocks and dividend stocks. Um, trades kind of like a bond. Yeah. So will shareholders support this offer? That's got to be have something to do with how the market reacts overall. Right, exactly. So Coke, um, you know, they still kind of have these legacy stakes in these businesses as well. I think they own about 20% of Coke Europe and then uh, Coke European Partners and then uh, 30% of Amatil. So, um, you know, for the rest of the shareholders, um, you know, it's a pretty generous premium, actually, or at least it seems that way. 19% um, to, uh, to Friday's, uh, no, uh, Thursday's trading, sorry, um, and an even higher kind of premium based on, you know, the last, last few months. Um, uh, the, the Coke uh, Atlanta company is getting, going to get slightly worse terms from that. Actually, there was an interesting kind of wrinkle in the release. So they're making an effort to get this deal done uh, pretty quickly and cleanly, um, you know, for, for shareholders. So it'll be interesting to watch, um, yeah, over the next, uh, next little while to see if shareholders go for this, which I think they will.